Hi, I wanted to talk to you guys about starting startups that actually have an impact on carbon. The, I think South Summit is about climate and it's about carbon. I think it's the biggest theme also at Davos and at, at many of the, the big events around the world this year, and it should be. But at a startup and innovation event like this one, many of the big players we see coming and talking about carbon are talking about their energy company or multi-billion dollar investments or government regulatory policy, and they're not really talking about what entrepreneurs can do. So for the next few minutes, I want to share with you a few ideas that maybe encourage you to start a company that has an impact on carbon. And so this is my 15-minute edition of Carbon Startup School. I started lots of companies over the years, and I think it actually is possible. I have often felt discouraged. How can you change the world? It seems hard, you know? But if our mission is this for today, I mean, isn't that what you do when you start a company? You try to do something insane, aud audacious, ambitious. So let's make this our mission, right? In 10 minutes, we're going to come up with three companies. And these three companies, I don't know if they'll be great companies, but we're going to come up with a few companies that don't require you to go back and get a PhD in electrical engineering from some fancy school. You're just going to start the company with the things that you already know now. So let's see if we can do it. Start a company that moves the needle on climate change. So here's an interesting fact that maybe you already know. You only need a trillion trees to undo all of the carbon that humanity has put in the air. Maybe a trillion sounds like a lot, but there's already three or four trillion trees in the world. So you only need 25% more trees than all the trees that already exist. It's not so many, right? It seems a little bit more manageable when you think about it that way. A trillion trees, because I think in the 200 years that we've been burning coal and other sources, there's about 2,400 gigatons, something like that, of carbon in the air, and we put about 100 every year in the air now. The number's been going down, but how do we take all that carbon out? Well, you only need a trillion trees. Okay, so a trillion. Sounds like a lot, right? Well, um, Google is worth more than a trillion dollars, and these other companies are worth two trillion and, you know, sometimes three trillion. And so some of the biggest startups of the last 25 or 30 years are worth more than a trillion each, right? And if you only need a trillion trees, well, what does a tree cost? A tree only costs about 20 cents to plant. My friend from the search engine, Ecosia, if on your iPhone you open your Safari search settings, one of your cho choices is now Ecosia, E-C-O-S-I-A, a search engine, and every time you search, they plant a tree for every 10 searches, something like that. And the guy who started that company told me it only costs 20 cents to plant a tree. You fly a plane over Canada and you drop seeds everywhere and it's not very expensive. And for only 20 cents, you can plant a tree. That means for a trillion trees, it doesn't even cost a trillion dollars. But this startup started in 1996. Um, Google, whatever, is worth much more than a trillion. So it's possible, right? It's not impossible. And in fact, if you look at just the companies that exist today, the private companies that are available, you know, there's a thousand, more than a thousand unicorns and altogether they're worth more than three trillion. So it's, I mean, it's super doable, right? Like trillion trees, not impossible. If you start a company worth a trillion dollars, well, it wouldn't even be 20% of the value to get the trillion trees up there, right? So we can do it. And you don't have to do it by yourself. I mean, you could do 1% of the problem. You could do 3% of the problem. So it's worth trying, is my point. Start a company with some level of impact. Maybe it's not a trillion, maybe it's 10 million, maybe it's 10 billion, but you've already moved the needle a little bit, right? So now we've got to figure out what we're going to start this company about. And I haven't planned this out. Well, I hadn't planned it out, but then I thought, well, it's 9.30 in the morning here in Madrid. No one will be ready to give me all their best ideas. So I did it instead at 9.30 p.m. in Madrid, because you know that 9.30 p.m. in Madrid is the best time to get some ideas. So I met some Spanish entrepreneurs yesterday, and I will, with these problems you see here, we're going to figure out some companies that we might want to start on the topic of carbon reduction. So these are the things that you should do, right? So once you decide that it's worth doing because there's, you know, only a trillion trees worth of a problem, then you've got to figure out, well, um, which one of these is good for me, you know? Well, transportation, uh, oh, construction of property. I mean, con buildings are about one-third of the entire problem of carbon. Building the buildings and then running the buildings, it's about a third of the entire problem. And the... Um, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change estimates that two-thirds of the carbon produced by buildings can be eliminated. Wow, through digitalization, by better energy management, by a more sustainable style of building. Wow, so I mean, that's a really big change, right? So you, it can be done, and that's just that square, and then you've got 
I mean, all these squares, these are things that people are starting companies about every day. You just got to do one with the skills that you already have, right? So that's the tricky part. Because normally when you see a chart like the one we looked at, you think, well, I mean, I don't know anything about, you know, the, the gut biome of cows. How will I create a new kind of synthetic biology that reduces methane? That seems tough. And for us sitting in the audience, if we're internet and technology entrepreneurs, what would we start? But we can. Let's choose to limit ourselves only to the things that we work on when we start internet and technology-enabled companies, right? So let's make this the next constraint. We're going to work on carbon. It is doable. You only need a trillion trees worth of, of a solution. But we have to do it with just software. So can we do that? So software. But software is more than just software, right? I mean, it's data. Lots of data, information, big data, analytics, signals. Sign. It's also networks. So when you connect data together, right, I mean, GitHub uh, is just people sharing data. GitHub doesn't give you data. It lets you share data. And once lots of people are sharing, or Dropbox, or Google Drive, I mean, once you're sharing, suddenly you're finding new insights and you're collaborating better. So it's data, software and data, networks, networks linking the data. And then also models. I guess the other thing to think about is when people talk about AI and ML, what they talk about is using data to create models. And then the models are the artificial intelligence or the machine learning systems that give you insights, algorithms, right? So all those things together. So I wonder if we can use just those things. But we don't want to build a new factory or a new kind of battery. We're not going to do anything capital intensive. So that's our next constraint. And we've already used most of our time, right? So we only have like five minutes left, and we have to come up with three companies. And I've been explaining all this stuff, and now how are we going to come up with three companies so fast? Let's see what we can do. All right, so let me give you some inspiration. So there's a few companies that are inspiring and that are basically pure data, pure software companies that I think will have a big impact on on carbon. So one of them is tomorrow.io. I mean, I didn't know about it. It's only a five-year-old company, a billion-dollar company. They track weather using unusual data sources like your Tesla. Your Tesla knows the temperature. It knows if it's wet outside. Your home security camera has pictures. So they track weather using a, a big sharing network, which is more precise than the government, which tracks weather using satellites and other sensors. They track that weather, and then they turn it into software that lets Uber know how long the car will take to arrive. So you're looking for your Uber. Is it sunny today or is it rainy today in Madrid, and how long will the traffic delay be? Yeah, Google Maps is pretty good, but then you have to also know what will the weather add, or your delivery that's coming from Amazon. It's an interesting business because it also shows you the price and impact of unpredictable weather. One of the consequences of climate change is that weather becomes less predictable, and it's much harder to run your business, and now you start seeing the price of weather. You start micro-forecasting. It's a very narrow and specific idea. This company is giving you a price for weather impact. Hmm. So is Descartes. So Descartes is an insurance company, and um, all they do is try to price certain events. So instead of selling you insurance for your building or for your trip or for your life, they make a bet with you. They say, oh, what are the odds that there will be a huge rainfall that gives you one meter of rain in your house? And I will sell you insurance against that one event. It's pure data. It's math. But they're selling you insurance against weather events. Again, they're putting a price on the impact of carbon. Maybe one other example, before we run out of time, we need three companies, remember, is um, oh, so Arcadia, another interesting company. Uh, it's financial software, but it doesn't track money. It just tracks carbon. If your company makes a pledge, if Apple tells you that they are net zero, or if Google tells you that the search has been carbon neutral since 2007, they have to prove it, they have to measure it. It's a very complicated business. They must need software. You start a software company, all it does is measure and estimate carbon use and how that changes over time. I think that's interesting, actually. All right, so now we have to come up with some companies. So first example, last night I met um, an entrepreneur from Madrid, well, Spanish entrepreneur. The company's called Flywire, and it's a fintech. So Flywire, if you look it up, multi-billion dollar company started by a Spanish entrepreneur, you can do it. Their company will let you wire money to a university in the US without expensive foreign exchange cost. Simple idea. Now, if you have euros and you live here in Spain, maybe it's not a big deal. You, your parents will wire the money to your degree at MIT, no problem. But if you're coming from uh, Latin America or Africa or Asia, the wire costs are very high. Moving money around is really hard between the rich world and the poor world. Fine. They started that company, Flyer, interesting. And so it, I thought that was inspiring. And, you know, we were out late. I didn't have a lot of time to think about it. But could you do a climate company that involved that? 
And、um, I think you could. I think all you do is do it for carbon removal, for planting trees, or for carbon credits. You can simply create a fintech that helps you move money from the rich world to the poor world, where people are planting trees. In sub-Saharan, the desertifying Africa, or in Latin America, or in Asia, or in, in the north of、um, of the world. I mean, these days, I guess it's Russia or Central Europe. If you wanted to buy those trees, they only cost 20 cents each, right, to plant, and you want to send a million euros. Just the FX. And if you're going to just help do foreign exchange, if you're a fintech specialized on trees, well, then maybe you should do more than that. Maybe you should make sure that the trees are really there. Make sure they're growing. Make sure that there's no fraud. I mean, essentially, you'd be creating something like an Upwork freelancer network platform, where now entrepreneurs are planting trees and they're selling them into your marketplace, and you're giving a low cost of transfer. But you're just building a fintech company. It's a fintech company that's just about selling. You know, you're just doing transactions on carbon credits. That's an idea. It's pure, pure software company. Carbon. You could start it, and it wouldn't be so different from from Flywire. And Flywire should do it, but they won't. They're busy doing what they do. You know. They're working on labor and other. Okay, next idea. So another Spanish entrepreneur that I met actually yesterday as well,、uh, Felipe from Job and Talent. Job and Talent, another multi-billion-dollar company founded by a Spanish entrepreneur. It's a very impressive company.、It、took a long time. Now it's huge. They、uh, they started with recruiting software, help you recruit more efficiently, hire people. It's tough because it's a tough business. It's very competitive. And what they discovered was a really powerful idea was. They do the recruiting, but then they also hire the people, and they work for Job and Talent. So if Amazon has a warehouse, Amazon says, "Give me a hundred people on Monday," and then on Wednesday they change their mind, and then two weeks later they say, "Okay, I need a thousand people now." And Job and Talent just makes it happen, and they get the salary. Job and Talent earns the salary of this staff member. So it's a full stack, labor on demand. They're using software to do better recruiting, software to do better management of the people, but really it's a labor platform. So let's see, how is that a startup and Climate. Well, I, actually, I, maybe here in town, another person who inspired me was Anna、uh, Anna Arino, who runs Bird. You know the bicycles? You've seen them, right? You have to charge them somewhere, and、uh, maybe you notice that people have to pick them up in the middle of the night and move them around and charge them. And actually, the device—I mean, the, the stuff needs to be charged. It's a completely new category. In the past. Was there any company that put stuff on the street and had to pick it up every night and then put it back out there with such scale? It's both a labor problem and an equipment problem. And so, my climate idea for you, number two here, is something between Job and Talent and Bird. You manage all these charging vehicles for all these networks, right? I mean, there's Bird, but there's also Lime. There's many different players. They all have the stuff in the same neighborhood. Why would they all have separate trucks and separate people that are coming and picking up these things? What you could have is a software platform that did the recruiting and the management of both labor and the devices. Where are they? How charged are they? I mean, if there is something that's on your mind all day, every day, is how much battery is in your phone, right? But these guys have thousands of these devices everywhere, and you don't want to overcharge them or undercharge them. So, idea number two is job and talent meets EV network. It is a platform for managing your devices and your people in the field. I mean, it's, I think it's a growing area, right? There'll be cars. There'll be other vehicles. Okay. So now let's get a third company. We only have a few moments left. So my last idea was at Martin Varshavsky's house. And so Martin is a wonderful entrepreneur, huge Jazztel, Yaa.com. Maybe you know these companies. But in the last few years, he's been starting、um, companies that are about fertility, women's fertility, an egg bank, and longer fertility cycle. And this one is easy, right? If you wanted to plant a trillion trees. The software you use now to track fertility cycles that women are using to have better management of their fertility, and then the software that I guess Martine is using to figure out when and how to manage the life cycle of a child. There's some kind of software that helps you manage when to plant the trees, how to grow the trees, and people are using them for indoor farms right now. The software for aero farms, these indoor farms, but you do it for the trillion trees you're going to plant outdoors. So it's a software company for governments and for that other company we just started. That's planting all those trees where you wire the money for carbon credits, but that software helps you plant and manage a trillion trees. You tie it maybe to Tomorrow.io, so you know the weather. Maybe you buy some insurance from Descartes, and I think maybe we've we've moved the needle, right? And so those are three ideas for you, and it's possible then just with software. And here are my hacks: do it for animals, measure. And sell it online. I mean, any carbon idea, do any of those three things, 
If you see something in healthcare, do it for animals. If you see something that's hard to do, just measure it. And if someone invents someone, just sell it online. That's your plan. So it's your turn. Thank you for listening. Woo!